Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. She was born in San Antonio, Texas, a Ziegfeld girl in New York, danced with the Prince of Wales in London, and in 1930 made her debut in Hollywood the star of a lavish Technicolor musical. But as the mid-40s rolled by, she was all but forgotten. Until two decades later, when Betty Davis noted in her autobiography, this former starlet climbed to the top of the Hollywood sign and in despair plunged to her death from the first letter of the very word that crushed her. Could this really be the end of the lovely and talented Claudia Dell? At age 16, she made her Broadway debut in Gay Paris, August 1925. It was in this production, Claudia put a twinkle in the eye of the great Florence Ziegfeld and was cast in the Ziegfeld Follies of 1927. The next year, she played Rosita in Mr. Z's musical, Rosalie. In late January of 1928, Claudia was one of eight showgirls involved in a scientific experiment. The girls were hooked up to lie detectors as they watched a love scene between John Gilbert and Greta Garbo. The experiment determined brunettes are more emotional than blondes. In the summer of 1929, she was cast as a lead for the London production of Mary Mary. But during a week of warm-up shows in the provinces, she was dropped from the role, quote, due to international complications. Claudia drew her full salary for two weeks and toured the UK, where she tripped the light fantastic with the future King of England, the dashing Prince Edward VIII. But as history would tell us, his heart was destined for another. Homesick, she returned to the States and moved to Los Angeles, where her family had relocated. In February of 1930, Claudia was offered a contract with Warner Brothers Pictures for the lead in their up-and-coming Technicolor musical, Sweet Kitty Bel Airs. More musical comedies followed. But this was the height of the Great Depression and lean years for the Hollywood studios. By December, Claudia, along with many other musical stars, were dropped by the Warner Brothers. Our talented Texan still drew offers from other major studios. The Stolen Jewels was a star-studded comedy short distributed by Paramount, produced to raise funds for a lung disease and sponsored by Chesterfield Cigarettes, only in Hollywood. By the end of 1932, Claudia had begun working for the usual suspects of Poverty Row, the undercapitalized and low-budget studios mostly located on or around Gower Street in Hollywood. Legend has it Harry Kahn was so taken by her beauty that the Columbia Pictures logo was designed in her image. Whether Claudia held the torch for the studio is still open for debate, but there is no question she held the globes for worldwide pictures. In 1934, Claudia starred in two hour gang shorts as the mother of Spanky. But the year's bright spot was Cecily DeMille's Cleopatra, cast as Octavia, the wife of Mark Antony. And then in 1935, there was the 12 part cliffhanger, The Lost City. As we can see, Claudia may have been the inspiration for Star Wars. Princess Leah. Another highlight was Algiers from 1938 with a small role opposite the most beautiful woman in the world. In 1940 there was a comedy novelty Source for the Gander and notable for a small early role by Alan Ladd. At age 35 she made her last screen appearance in Charlie Chan's Black Magic from 1944. Her once promising Hollywood career over Claudia faded into obscurity. Until almost two decades later, when Betty Davis published her autobiography. Claudia Dell 
plunged to her death from the first letter of the very word that crushed her. Which I'm glad to report was false. She was alive and well and working as a director for the Powers Modeling Agency in Beverly Hills. She left us in 1977, age 68. Claudia Dell, gone but not forgotten. And now for today's feature presentation, The Midnight Lady from Chesterfield Pictures, released May 15, 1932. Sarah Padden is cast in the lead as a woman who now runs a successful speakeasy, but years earlier was forced to leave her husband and children by an interfering mother-in-law, played by Lucy Beaumont. Our star of the day, Claudia Dell, plays the daughter and believes her mother is dead. She dates a respectable lawyer, but on the sly, our naughty girl rendezvous with a notorious ladies' man, Theodore von Eltz. Throw in a jealous lover named Mona, and we have a love quadrangle, a crime of passion, and a genuine pre-code Hollywood melodrama with a touch of Madame X. crowd of soaks in there yet. Where's Nita? She's in her office. She was asking for you a minute ago. Come in. Well, late again. Pleasure before business, huh? Well, my friends from Chicago insisted on the opera and nightclubs. I'm like a postman. On my day off, I go for a long walk. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, I can. Never mind your price list. Here's your order. Ooh, no scotch. This is better than the last stuff. We can that guy Goldberg. We got Sandy McTavish making it for us now. It's good. Well, if it isn't boyfriend, you're going to lose a customer. Put me down for six cases. Champagne? That last stuff you sent me was nothing but celery, tonic, and cider. Now listen, this champagne... Now don't waste your breath. I put away more champagne than you'll ever sell. But this stuff is good. I know better. It doesn't taste the same coming up as it does going down. Does my stuff have to work both ways? <laughs> Come on now, buy your drink. I only use it for a rub down. But with you, darling... Now, don't get sentimental. I'm old enough to be your mother. <laughs> What'll it be? Sauterne. Sauterne? And you? No. Mm. 
You're a sap to stand for it, Bert. I'm telling you. Yeah, she's sure making a fool out of you. Say, why don't you assert yourself? Sure, tell her what's what. I'll lay off. She's all right. She's all right. Did you ever see such a nut? She uses you for a grease rag and you love it. I told you to let up on her. Well, say, we're trying to put you wise to yourself. And you start riding us. Well, I don't like the way you're talking. And I don't like the way you're listening. Go ahead and tell him, Ralph. Tell him what? If you want to know, she's out with Byron Crosby tonight. And you know that guy's reputation. Shut up. I know who she's out with. All right, be an idiot. Sure, go ahead. But if she keeps on cruising around with that oily-haired artist, she's going to be just the kind of a guy that he is. Oh, uh, you... What do you think this is? A prize ring? Come on, you pop up, get out. Who are you talking? talking to you. Oh, what's going to throw him out of here? That's what I want to do. Take your dirty hands Come off, on, baby. Get him all the way out. Get a glass of water. Come on, darling. Let's get out of this. Don't. Sure, it's all right with me. It's going to use his yours. That's my ass. Come on, Fran. Don't you dare touch me. Come on, kid. Let's get out of this. Oh, now, 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 calm down. Calm down. Where is he? No, it's Let me all go. right. He's gone. Huh? Well, I'll get him all Now, right. calm down. Do you want the reporter to hear about this? Well, yeah, man. All right. Feeling better? I guess so. Say, did I hit that guy? I'm afraid not. Huh? On the contrary, sort of vice versa, as it were. Don't you think you've had enough? The way I feel, I can't get enough. What's your name? Bert? Just call me Bert. My name is Nita. I know. I know. What stuff is this? Oh, that guy's cracked about Jean. Jean? Jean who? Austin. Jean Austin. And she's a swell girl. Even she is giving me the runaround. She ditched me tonight to go out with this Byron Crosby fellow just because I asked her not to. You know? Go on. Do you? I don't know anything good about him. Why don't you marry him? Have it over with. I would. Like that. But her pa says no, and her grandma says no, and she says no. Her brother says yes. Say, she's a peach. You'd like her. Why don't you bring her around sometime? Say, that's a good idea. Next time we're downtown, I'll bring her around. That's a very good idea. Next time we're downtown, I'll bring her around. What, what is this? I'm in a tailspin or something. Lillian, let me take him upstairs. Huh? Where are we going? Oh, it's all right. Now, upstairs, wait till I down. Oh? Oh, right over hey, here. this is swell. Right over here. It's uh, just like a public library. Right over here. Oh, uh, there uh, we are. Now, take off your coat. Huh? Get the cover. You'll be more comfortable. Oh. Now lie down. Huh? Do what? Lie down. You'll feel better. Oh, lie down.
school, Byron. Must I? Yes. It's after 8 o'clock, and if Dad knew you were here, he'd have a fit. Come here. No, I won't. Come here to me. Good morning. How do you do? <clears throat> and, uh, good morning. Good morning. Shall I call you? Oh, no, no, I'll call you. Don't Goodbye. forget. No, I had a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Bob. This is a fine time for you to be getting in. Don't do that. Well, you needn't take my head off about it. It's lucky for you Dad overslept this morning. Good. That means you're not going to stitch on me. Well, I never have, have I? But that gives me the right to watch after you just the same, oh, doesn't it? Here, you talk, you think I didn't have a brain in my head. Well, sometimes I think you haven't. What right have you to kiss that Crosby fellow anyway? I suppose you never kissed a girl. Well, that's different. Oh, I see. I'm to do as you say, not to do as you do. Oh, I just hate to see you making a fool of yourself. Oh, what's in a kiss? Plenty. Sometimes. Besides, you're giving Bert the runaround. Bert needs a shot of high life. Bert's a swell fellow. And you treat him like a doormat. Here comes Grandma and Dad. Beat it. Good morning, son. Good morning, Father. How did you sleep, Grandmother? I didn't. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. You don't look it. Did you hear Jean come in last night? Yes, sir, I did. Well, I didn't. Well, I did. About one o'clock. Where is she then? She isn't in our room. Well, she, uh, she went to play tennis. With whom? Well, she didn't say that, Father, but she did say she'd be back in time for breakfast. Ah. Harvey, you'll have to take that girl in hand. She isn't home enough to shake a stick at. I'll speak to her. Yes, that's all the good it'll do. One word from us and she does as she pleases. Mm. Boy, does that hit the spot. Oh, I know just how you feel. You've been there, eh? A couple of times. Maybe three. Oh. You know, you're an awfully good sport. You think so? Uh-huh. If you turned me loose last night, I'd probably be in the tabloids this morning. Mmm. Then Jean's family would break the engagement. Right? Right. Jean's family. Well, thank heaven I'm not marrying them. <clears throat> sort of made a fool of myself last night, didn't I? Don't we all? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Daddy dear. Good morning. How's the lumbago, Grandma? Who said I'd lumbago? Well, haven't you? I'll have to meet a dude, Parker. Yes, miss. Whom did you play tennis with? Oh, let's see. Uh, Grace, Dodo, and Barry. Why? Your bed wasn't slept in last night. I made it up myself. Ah. What's happened to you that you're so industrious all of a sudden? Say, what is this, an inquisition? Can I make up my own bed without going through a third degree? Jean, keep your voice down. Jean! Oh, I forgot, Grandma. You never remember. Oh, Lord, we thank thee for this food and pray with all our hearts that thy kindness and loving mercies will bless the day, bringing harmony, peace, and happiness into our troubled household. Amen. What do you mean, troubled household? Was that a crack at me? Harvey. Hold your tongue, Jean. Oh, calm down, everybody. You're bothering my indigestion. Keep out of this, Don. That's no way to talk to your grandmother, Jean. Well, make her let me alone. Your grandmother thinks you stared entirely too late and too much. Grandma thinks. Grandma thinks. Oh, cut it out, sis. Will I you? won't. All the time, it's what Grandma thinks. Can't anyone around here think but her? Be quiet, Jean. I won't have you talking that way. You grow more and more like your mother. Thank heaven for it. 
If she had enough spunk to walk around with a lot of mid-Victorian ideas, more power to her. Hey, control yourself. Well, I'm tired of being jumped on all the time. No wonder I never stay at home. Harvey, are you going to let her talk to me that way? Gee, you're not to talk to your grandmother that way. All right. I won't talk to Grandma that way. What's the matter? Nothing. I was just thinking of a couple of kids whose mother walked out on them when they were babies. Didn't have been much of a mother. Well, at the time, she thought she was justified. I don't see any justification or anything like that. She couldn't have loved them. Oh, yes, she did. She had a good reason. Too much mother-in-law. Oh, it was like that. And, as the fortune teller says, a tall, dark man came along. With a lot of understanding and sympathy. Yeah, naturally. And she fell for him in a big way and eloped with him. Oh. Might have been anybody. You're thinking about the children, aren't you? Yes, I was. She thought about them, too, for years. Wonder why she doesn't go to them. She's a notorious woman. You wouldn't be proud of her. As far as they're concerned, she died 15 years ago. Has she ever seen them? Well, the cat can look at the king. I'm going to give you a little advice. You say your Jean likes to play? She certainly does. Why don't you play around with her? I'll bet you take her to lectures and concerts instead of dances and shows. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Guess it. Studying men has been part of my life. Did you ever go to speakeasies? Yes, yeah, she goes to speakeasies. With you? No. Nope. Well, if she insists on doing it. Wouldn't it be better if she went with you? Say, that's an idea. Bring her around sometime. You're all right. Gosh, I'm doing court in an hour. Old W.I. Conlon Sr. is trying an important case, and if I'm late, he'll fire me. Are you a lawyer? Well, I... I'm studying to be. Well, if ever I'm in trouble, will you defend me? To the bitter end, dear lady. To the bitter end. <laughs> Well, here I am. Where's everybody? They've gone. Don't like You didn't ask anyone else to come. Aren't you glad? No, I'm mad. And I'm going. Oh, please, darling. I simply had to. I wanted to see you. <laughs> Will the presence of others blind you to my charm? I wanted to see you alone. <laughs> I had a hunch it would be like this. Then why did you come? To see if my hunch was right. Do that again, Byron, and I am leaving. Afraid? Yes, if you want to know it. Of me? No. Of myself. Thank you. <laughs> you win. See? Well, if I must. Lemon or rum? I'll have the rum without the tea. What do you have for chasing? Why for a good rum? <laughs> Here you are. 
Well, 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 what's all this? The great divide. <laughs> you know all the answers, don't you? Oh, I wrote them. I rather like you. My, I'm flattered. In fact, I adore you. Now, what am I supposed to do? Break down? I wish you would. See, I thought you were going to sketch me. There seems to be no alternative. You know a few answers yourself, don't you? I've read your book. Not bad, Byron, not bad. What do you want me to do? Just be your own charming self. Well, that's funny. I thought artists wore smocks and had their models stand on platforms and awkward positions. I have a new technique. There's nothing new about your technique, Byron. Well, we'll let that go. Want to see what I've done? I'd love to. Oh, that's not beautiful enough. Always on the defensive, aren't you? Yes, but I'm with you. Pardon me. Hello? Oh, when did you get back in town? I'm not in town. I'm still in Atlantic City. I thought you said I was the only one. Byron, who's there? Well, no one. You're lying to me. I can tell by the way you talk. Now, Mona, don't be like... No. Oh, no. Yes. Mm. Surely. Yes. Now, don't be that way, Mona. Say, what the devil makes you so suspicious? I tell you, I am alone. Yes. I'll be a good girl and stay there for a few days. We're well, all right. But remember, I'll be checking up on you. All right, check up on me. Goodbye. Drinks. Tall ones? Yes. Highball? Please. Two highballs, Joe. Two highballs. Cigarette? Thank you. <laughs> nice and sweet. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, Nita. How do you do? Hello there. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like you to meet Miss Austin, Miss. Uh, what is your last name? Nita St. George. Miss St. George, Miss Austin. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thanks. I will. Bert's been telling me all about you. My boyfriend fell overboard last night, didn't he? Ooh, what a loud flight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. So long, folks. Hi, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Well, Hello. Fix him up, Matt. I'm all right, Mr. Crosby. What'll it be, folks? Hi, Dry martini? Wouldn't you care to have a table, Mr. Crosby? Oh, Would you like I to? Think that'd be great. Uh, yes, fine. I will. All right. Try your drink. I recommend it. Surely. Not bad. Not good, but not bad. It's good. I like it. Excuse me a moment. Certainly. I'll be right back. All right. You two are quite chummy, aren't you? She's a good egg. Sort of a cupid, if you know what I mean. No, I don't. Okay, let it go. All right. I think I'm going to put you in a private room. Why? Just to raise it ever a little more privately. Oh, neither. Victor, open up uh, some of my special champagne for them. You know. 
Well, that's very nice, Nita, but uh, why the celebration? It's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come along. Won't you join us? Yes, uh, later. You're looking very charming this evening yourself. Flatterer. I suppose uh, Mona should hear you say that. Mona's in Atlantic City. Oh. Suppose we go up to my apartment. What do you say? We tell me up there. Surely, let's go. All right. I hope you don't mind climbing a few stairs. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Do you like Polly and Earl, darling? I'd love to. Make yourself at home, but find cigarettes on the table. All right, thank you. Put your hand on the bed, dear. Thank you. Why, it's amazing what can be done in these old brownstone houses. The basement is speaking to the first floor a restaurant and the second floor a home. Has <laughs> <laughs> powder? No, thanks. I'll use my own. So you really think it's home like? Oh, yes. Much more so than my home. Too much family. There are problems sometimes. But I've seen you someplace before. No, I don't think so. Oh, dear, I've caught my ring again. Let me help you. Careful now. Yeah, I've almost got it. Oh, thank you. Oh, what an odd ring. Isn't it? I found it in an old box in the attic. And you've worn it all these years. How do you know I'd worn it a long time? <laughs> Only little girls and boys play in the attic, you know. Don't you love it on rainy days? Oh, I'll say. Bubs and I used to have more fun rummaging in trunks and things. Bubs? Yes, my brother. Oh. If he were here now, he'd bowl me off for using too much lipstick. <laughs> Brothers are like that. Oh, but Don's really a peach. He just tries to boss me all the time. Older? Mm-hmm. But as handsome as a picture. How long have you known Bert? Oh, not long. Does he pull stunts like last night often? Why, no. I've never seen him that way before. <laughs> he seemed to have an extra special reason last night. Well, I do keep him guessing, but he loves it. <laughs> Most men do. <laughs> well, I thought you'd never get your noses powdered. <laughs> After you're married, young man, you'll find out what waiting is. After we're married? Mm -hmm. Being an hour late is on time for Jean right now. Oh. I think it's a gag. <laughs> Pardon me. Hello? Ask him to wait. I'll be right down. Pardon me, just a minute, please. I'll be right back. I'll send you up a couple of snifters. Oh, thank you. She's a funny one, isn't she? She's a good egg. You like her. Everyone does. It's the funniest thing. What? All the feeling you get sometimes when you meet a person, like you'd met them before. You're funny, too. Are you just finding that out? Sometimes you're so different. You don't seem like the same person. Now, Mr. Zilch. Now, quit stalling, Mrs. Burb, and give me a kid. Promise you won't tell anyone? Not a soul. Thank you. Oh, all right.
Harvey, just look at that. Look at it. What's all this? That's what I should like to know. That's what we should find out. Where did it come from? In this box of flowers for Jean. Who sent it? That artist, Byron Crosby. Harvey, Jean is getting away from us completely. And unless you take her in hand, she'll follow right in her mother's footsteps. Don't talk like that, Mother. Hey, Dad, may I borrow your car? I got four flats and I'm clean out of gasoline and... Well, now what's the matter? Your sister. Well, Harvey, what are you going to do about it? Sit there like a wooden Indian? Let me have that dog. Your sister. Jane. Jane, you hear me? Yes, Daddy. I'll be with you in just a minute. Your sister. Your granddaughter. Harvey. Don. What is this? Another inquisition? Well, what have I done now? What have you to say for yourself, daughter? Looks like I'm on a spot. Is that all you've got to say for yourself? Well, if I said I didn't pose for this, you wouldn't believe it. I would not. What's the use? I believe you, sis. Thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad, am I in the doghouse with you? I'm listening, Jean. What have you to say for yourself? I didn't pose for that. And I was just beginning to like you too. How do you explain that? I don't. You wouldn't understand if I did. Uh, Harvey, do you hear her? Well, Jean, I'm waiting. Well, Byron's guessed my head. And the rest he did from imagination. Just for a gag. Hmm. I know it sounds pretty thin, Don, but it's the truth. Whether they believe it or not. If you say it's the truth, I believe you. When I was young, girls didn't visit men in their apartments. When you were young, girls wanted to do exactly as they do now. Only they lacked the nerve. Oh, Harvey, are you going to let her talk to me like that? Be careful what you say, Jean. Oh, I'm fed up. Well, one thing is certain. This Crosby is no fit person for you to associate with. I forbid you to see him again. Oh, you meddling old fuss budget. Oh, Harvey. Keep a civil tongue in your head, young lady. Hello. Did you get it? Huh. I'll say I did. Oh, tickle pink. Okay, see you tonight. I'm busy. Who was that? That was St. Peter, wanting to know what size halo you wore when you were a girl. Harvey. Jean Austin, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, make her let up on me. Just like your mother. Willful, headstrong. If you'll make another crack about my mother, I'll tell you some things about yourself. There's some letters in the attic that you should have burned. Harvey. <laughs> be quiet, Father. Now remember, you're not to see this fellow Crosby again. Do you understand? I heard you, Dad. Come, dear. and I'm sleepy. I wish you would. Oh, well, now two is company, three is a crowd. See you later. Okay. Let's get out of here. What do you say? 
Let's not say we did. Herman. Yes, madam. You on booth number two? Yes, that's I am. Listen. Stick close and hear everything Mr. Crosby has to say to that girl. Do you understand? Yeah, you mean what they say? Yeah? Yes, everything. And for once in your life, get on your toes. Yeah. Do it! Yeah. Grandma says little girl shouldn't go to man's apartment. The old so-and-so. But we happen to be living in a modern age, my dear. Oh, that's an old line, Barbie. Barbie! Oh, I think that's cute. From now on, I'm going to call you Barbie. Shall we go? Grandma says no. Oh, shoot, Grandma. Oh, that's an idea. Let's come in. Well? I stuck with that table, and sometimes I hear some things, and sometimes nothing. Have they gone? Oh, sure, they went. Where? Well, for a long time, he would argue with her how lonesome his studio was. And then he went. Get in taxi. Yeah, right away. Thank you. down, be comfortable. All right. Cigarette? No, thanks. Drink? No, I've had enough. Now, isn't this more comfortable here? Mm-hmm. But I'm so sleepy. Now, is that nice? Fiery? I know exactly what you're going to say, so don't say it. I got lip rouge all over your mouth. Did you? Mm -hmm. Excuse me a moment, will you, dear? Where are you going? To uh, get some cigarettes and uh, take this off. Hmm? It's incriminating, you know. All right.
mind. He said, come up any time. Sure, that's okay. The taxi driver testifies that he deposited you at Crosby's studio at 1.49. Is that right? That would be about right. Who admitted you? He did. Was he expecting you? No. What did he say? Nothing. He simply admitted me. Yes. What did you say? I told him I wanted my money. What money? The money he owed me. For what? His account at my place. Is it true that you operate a speakeasy? I suppose you might call it that. How long have you known Byron Crosby? Several years. Intimately? He was a good customer. Your Honor, I insist that the witness answer that question. You must answer the question. I wasn't particularly friendly with him. Yet you went to his apartment? Yes. Did you have words with him that night? Yes. Did he ask you to leave? Yes. What did you do? I refused to leave without my money. She hasn't a chance. A jury will convict her, sure. Her own testimony is doing that. Have you seen this gun before? Yes. Is it yours? No. Whose is it then? I don't know. Was anyone with Crosby when you arrived? He was alone. Did you threaten him? I told him I wanted my money. That isn't answering the question. Did you threaten him? Yes. With this gun? No. With a lawsuit. Were you ever in love with Byron Crosby? What do you mean by that? Nothing. Does that imply that you were on intimate terms with the deceased? Could be interpreted that way, I suppose. You must answer the question. What was the question again? Were you on intimate terms with the deceased? Yes. Were you in his apartment from the time you arrived until Crosby's friends walked in? Yes. Three people saw you, with this gun in your hand standing by Crosby's body. Is that correct? Yes. Your Honor, the state rests.
gentlemen? Have you arrived at a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty of manslaughter. Jury out 24 hours. Returns verdict on 7th Bannet. Appeal held unlikely, it says here. Hmm. Seven ballots. They were out long enough. Well, they had to weigh the evidence, Mother. But no one actually saw her do it, Dad. Pedal sticks. A blind man could have seen she was guilty from the start. Certainly. The evidence was incontrovertible. Incontrovertible? It was obvious. Thanks. Not a flaw in it. You're quite right, Harvey. She was a low person. She's not a low person. You can thank your lucky stars that your name wasn't dragged into You've it. You've no right to condemn a person you've never seen. Oh, but I know all about her. That's enough for me. She's notorious. That's not so. Jane, be careful. To hear you talk, one would think you knew her. <laughs> I do know her. What? Harvey, she knows her. What's all this? Yes, I know her. And if you want to know something else, I've been in her place, in her apartment. And I can tell you this. If I were guilty of something, I'd a thousand times rather have her on the jury than a dozen like you. Harvey! Gee. You're just a suspicious, narrow-minded old woman, intolerant of anyone's fault but your own. Harvey, are you going to sit there and let her talk to me like that? Go to your room! Were you ever known to take the part of your children? You forget yourself, young lady. I wish I could forget myself. There, dear. Jean's not been herself lately. <laughs> Take number four down there. Thank you. It was awfully nice of you to come with me. She's asked about you every time I've been here. I think of spending so much time in a place like this. Oh, Bert, it's awful. Well, you wouldn't call it a holiday. Here she comes. I'm so glad to see you, dear. She asked me to bring her, didn't you, Jean? Oh, of course I did. I've wanted to come for a long time. I've hoped that you might. I'm fond of you two youngsters. So. I hardly know what to say. Don't try to say anything, dear. Just tell me about yourself. Are you on the wagon? Yes. I have been ever since Jean asked me to. She is too. Oh, I'm glad of that. Did you get the candy and magazines we sent? Yes. I enjoyed them too. Especially the candy. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, I made the candy myself. I thought it was homemade. Well, I like that. You never made any candy for me. Fudge making for sweethearts went out when I was a girl. Oh. Time's up. When are you two going to get married? That's what I'd like to find out. How about it, Jean? Why wait? We have to wait a little while. Time's up. I hope
hope you'll come again sometime. Anita. Cigarette? No, thanks. What's the matter? Sit down, Bert. I want to tell you something. Nita's innocent. What makes you think so? I don't think so. I know so. How do you know? Because I was in Byron's apartment the night he was killed. And Nita arrived just as I was leaving. Oh, please don't touch me, Bert. Sit down and listen. I didn't have the nerve to tell the truth. They would have sent me away just like they did her. I was afraid. I wanted to talk, but I couldn't. I kept quiet. Jean. Jean, dear. I didn't do it, Bert. I know you didn't. I haven't been fair with you. I played around with Byron. Yes, I know. But that was all. You believe me, don't you? Of course I believe you. Then the vanity case is the only thing that makes you think Mona might have been there. Yes. And the fact that when he talked to her over the phone, she was terribly angry. Have you met her? Yes. The same day I met him. She shot daggers at him when he was dancing with me. She might have left that case there some other time. Yes. But if she were there that night, and missed it after she left, she hasn't forgotten it. That's right. Here, may I see it? Wait, I threw it away. What? I was so frightened. You threw it? Well, that shoots that idea. But I remember it perfectly. Yeah? Lucille has one just like it. Yeah? Look, Jean. Here's our plan. You'll have to go and see it. I want to see Miss Sebastian, please. Who shall I say? Miss Jean Austin. Just sit down, please. Thank you. don't remember me. Well, I... Oh, to be sure. How stupid of me. You're one of my friends. E pluribus unum. I beg your pardon? That means one of many. Oh, uh, of course, uh, Byron was rather liberal with his affection. You and I ought to know. Byron meant nothing to me, my dear. Won't you sit down? Thank you. No, thanks. I suppose you're wondering why I'm here, aren't you? Well, I must admit, I am rather puzzled. I have something that belongs to you. To me? Yes. Something I thought you ought to have in your possession. 
Why, where on earth did you get this? In Byron's apartment, the night he was murdered. You were in Byron's apartment the night he died? Yes, I was. And the police never found it out? There are a lot of things the police don't know. Are you trying to insinuate that I was there? I'm not insinuating anything. But I'm not a fool either. I don't want to be dragged into this any more than you do. Well, I was in Atlantic City the whole week. The day before Byron dropped out, your vanity was not on the couch. And that night it was. Why, you oh, little... Don't be a fool. We both had something to hide, and I thought we'd get together, that's all. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. I've done my part. You made no mistake, youngster. Well, you'll figure it out. Within three hours after Jean saw her, she's leaving for Europe. That looks fishy to me. The district attorney's taking a long chance, I think. I only promised to question her if she tried to leave. If she's nothing to conceal, she's nothing to be afraid of. Well, maybe that's right. Well, there she is. suit with the car trimming. I beg your pardon, are you Mona Sebastian? Yes. I'm sorry, you'll have to come along with us. Who are you? I work from the district attorney's office. This is an outrage. It's orders and I'm sorry, you'll have to come along. But I'll miss my sailing. That don't mean anything to me, come on. Miss Austin has just told me a very unusual story. And in the interest of justice, you should not object to answering my question. All right, fire away. I'll still have time to catch my boat if you'll hurry. I trust so. You told Miss Austin you were in the city the night Byron Crosby met his death. I was in Atlantic City. You checked out of your hotel that evening at 11 o'clock. Is that a crime? Atlantic City is 130 miles from New York. Yes, but less than two hours by plane. We have evidence that you did return by plane. All right, then. I did. It would be well for you to realize the seriousness of your situation. What do you mean by that? Am I suspected of killing Byron Crosby? There are circumstances in connection with your relations with Byron Crosby which require explanation. That's ridiculous. Byron and I were madly in love. That's all right. I don't doubt you. Uh, sit down again. Can you account for your movements after you arrived in the city? Of course I can. I went home, completely fagged out, and then went to bed. What time was that? About a quarter to two. Your maid said it was two o'clock. Oh, I see. My maid's word is to be credited more than mine. I'm merely quoting what she's sworn to. How far is your apartment from Crosby? About uh, 15 minutes' ride. Your maid testimony is correct. That 15 minutes would have made it possible for you to have been in Byron Crosby's apartment at the time of his death. Have it your way. Your attitude is not helpful. Well, what do you want me to do? Break down and say I killed him? Not unless you did. Well, I didn't. Is this your gun? No. I've never seen it before. That's rather strange. We've traced the serial number and the record says that you bought it. That's a lie! May I see you a moment, please? Certainly. Of 
Where'd you get this gun? Byron gave it to me. Ah, then it is your gun. All right, then. I did kill him. I'm glad I got it off my mind. You're under arrest for the murder of Byron Crosby. I'm scared. Oh, no, you're not. These are your friends. You're home again. Can you stay right behind me? Sure, I will. All right. Let's go. my life. You have yours before you. You had everything to lose. I had everything to gain. Mm -hmm. Got no scowl in your eyes. Jean's mother, aren't you? Our mother died 15 years ago. All right. If you want it that way. I don't know what you're talking about. Could I kiss you? Sure. Well, you stay here with her. And I go down and see the crowd. I'll be back in a minute. 